Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this WordPress video, I'd like to show you guys how you can implement a front page slider, or really a slider on any page of your website. Um, the plugin we're going to be using for this tutorial is called uh, Revolution Slider. It comes pre-built into a lot of premium things, but really you could use any slider plugin you want and follow along with similar steps. So we're going to start things off by going to the WP Admin interface. Um, and you'll see down here at the bottom, Revolution Slider, as long as you have your slider plugin uh, gone in, installed into your website, which would go into the WP content slash plugins folder, and you've gone ahead, uh, installed it there and activated it, as you can see over here, Revolution Slider is there. Usually slider plugins put um, basically their link to their editing page down here towards the bottom. So for Revolution Slider, I'm going to go ahead and click that right there. And here you can see two sections, Revolution Sliders and Revolution Slider Templates. Um, as you can see on the home page, we have this slider running and we're basically just going to try to recreate that going step by step. So I'll show that one more time real quick and uh, kind of talk about the things here. So you can see on the background of each of these slides, we have a background image, but there's also a couple of transparent images being added uh, in front of that. And you can also add text elements. On the second slide, we have a button, which would link to a theoretical slash shop page, but we haven't actually set that up for this website, uh, test site and all. Um, and then on the third, uh, the third one, <laughs> we have a bunch of different elements, including a secondary image, uh, text elements as layers, another text layer, and this guy over here. Um, and we're, I'm getting the images to use for these tutorials, by the way. Great site called pixabay.com. All the things you can basically use for free on anything you want. You can also tip the creators with the little coffee button there. Just a cool shout out because that's a really cool site. So let's go ahead and get into this. So create new slider is the button you're going to be looking for. And then you have to give it a slider title and a slider alias. So for slider title, that can really be anything you want. Maybe we'll call it tutorial slider. And for the alias, uh, I like to uh, make that lowercase, kind of like you would a slug. Uh, so tutorial slider, and maybe I'll just make that all lowercase. And you can see, it automatically generates a slider shortcode over here. So in order to put this on any page or post in the website, we would have to use rev, uh, rev underscore slider, space tutorial slider, and wrapped in those square brackets. So on this particular theme called EcoBox, which is free for the next 17 days on ThemeForced, um, it will automatically go ahead and give you some options down here. So page appearance, and this is theme specific, you can select the slider right here. But as an alternative to that, you can basically add it in as the short code, rev underscore slider, home slider, and then that'll get it posted on your page, whichever page you want to put it on. So let's go back into the revolution slider now, and you'll notice that it didn't get created because uh, although we put in the title and the alias, I forgot to hit save or create slider down here, so make sure you do that. So let's do that once again, tutorial slider, and then tutorial slider. Okay, and we're gonna just use that as source type gallery. Uh, now down here you have a couple settings which might be interesting to you. Um, by default, a slider is set to auto responsive, uh, which will just kind of make it try to fit the size of your web page. Um, but you have an alternative option of putting it full screen here. So whatever size the user's browser is in, it'll try to make as the size of your slides. Um, or you can go ahead and customize that. But in most cases, we'll just leave that as auto-responsive. Um, layer grid size, probably going to be relevant to you. If you want your slider to be a particular size on your home page, uh, this is going to be where you want to do it. So... 960 pixels width by 350 pixels height. That's the default. We can change that to be larger by, say, putting 450 and then going down here and creating slider. Um, so I think that's what I had for the original. I'll double check that real quick. Uh, yeah, that's right. 
And now we can go ahead and start editing this tutorial slider. So edit slides. And from here, you're going to need to create some slides, obviously. So create slide, and you can select some images to use for your slides. I was using, I believe, and once again, I'm getting all these images off of Pixabay, this one and this one, and then this one was the last one. So if you select them in order, it should put them here in the order you select them, which is great. So technically speaking, we could go ahead and uh, load this up on the front page now, but it does require more editing. So here on the front page, in order to change the slider, I'm going to click on this drop down menu and put tutorial slider. Uh, in many themes, they'll also have something similar to this, but if worst comes to worst, you can add your resolution slider once again by using the short code, uh, which would be rev underscore slider tutorial slider. So I'm going to go ahead, update the page, view the page, and we'll see the slider. And as the background images, you also notice that it has some pretty strange transitions. Well, I shouldn't really say it's strange. They're in the premium package for the transitions that are available here in uh, Site of Revolution Slider. Um, personally, I took them out for the demo so that you wouldn't get like the very dramatic ones, but it's up to you what you want. Now, another problem you're going to notice is that the positioning of these background images is not particularly great. It looks okay with the jams one. But when we see the logs, I mean, if, if you're going to have an image of a bunch of logs, you probably want the logs to be a little bit more focused. So we can change that in the Revolution Slider Editor. And we do that on a per slide basis. So over here in the admin interface, we're editing Tutorial Slider, Slide 1. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to change Random Flat and Premium over to just Random Flat to get those more basic transitions. Once again, completely up to you. A transition duration, how long you want the transitions to take when it goes between slides. I think it's fine to leave that as the default. And we can go down a little bit more here. Oh, and I, I should point out that transition duration is just for this one slide. You can see all of these three slides I um, mean, any other slides we add. Uh, when we're editing here, it's a per slide basis. So I'm going to go down and we're going to, we can see the image background. Uh, that's what we want there. Also note solid color and transparent, also an option if you would prefer just one color background. Um, but now we have this section over here where we see the slide itself and uh, we, we can see basically the, the focus lines where the main section of the slide is supposed to be. Um, and below that, we have add layer, add layer image, and add layer video. And this is where the bulk of the remainder of work is going to take place as we add text and extra images to each of the slides. Uh, but one thing I want to take care of before that is actually going to be the background settings. Oh, background fit. How do you want this background image to fit into the slide? And remember that the slider has a width of 950 pixels and a height of 350 pixels by default. So we're trying to make the image fit to that. Now, one option would be to Photoshop the size. So you just get, uh, like you can crop out the portion of the image you want inside of Photoshop, make sure that you export it as the exact size of the slider. And then that would be one good option. Uh, it may even be the better option. Um, but an alternative to that is to click here on background fit cover. And we could do something like go to percent. And this is decent when you have bad proportions in your image to the slider. Um, so most of these images, I believe, were captured at about a 16 by 9 ratio. So if I want to scale the height of the image to reflect that, I would put it at something around 170%. Okay, and that should update. It doesn't always. Let me see here. So if you get a problem with updating, I would just recommend updating the slider and refreshing the page, and we'll see if that changes it a bit. Okay, it is actually changing. I just didn't notice. So let's bump that down to 170, and that looks about right, the right proportions. Um, of course, you can check your image and do the basic math on that to figure out what ratio it is between width and height. Um, but yeah, that's one way you can get that going. And... On top of that, uh, what we're probably going to want to do is position it 
so that the right section of the image is actually showing there. And the place we do that is background position. So if you want the top of the image to show, you can leave it at center top. Alternatively, center center might make more sense, so you go straight for the center, and then that's where you would get the um, uh, kind of the main focus of most images tend to be in the center. Uh, you could also do left center, right center, uh, which, which is more relevant when you don't have 100% of the width applying here. So in this case, we're going to go with probably center center. And we'll leave it alone for right now. So what we need to do next is add some layers to this, unless you just want a blank image slider. So you have two options really here in most cases, add image or add layer. If you want to do text, you're going to be looking at add layer. If you want, obviously, to include an image and ideally a transparent one, you would go to add layer image. Uh, video is also an option, but I think that the use cases for that are going to be kind of limited. It, it, like, do you really want a video to be playing inside of your slider? If so, then that's there for you. So I'll go to add layer to get things started. And you'll notice it positions it over here, layers, timing, sorting, Z index, which is uh, basically the order in which they display, um, and a few other things. So the layer itself automatically goes up here in the top right, and it's just a black text field. It's hardly visible. What we need to do with that is change the style. So you can either select from the style drop-down menu. You can see the previews over there to the right. Or you can select one and then edit the style or even edit global style. But I think for here, we're just going to go with one of these defaults to kind of speed things up a bit. So um, maybe we'll take this red. Yeah, okay. That's not too bad there. And the text might not be large enough. We can change that in a second. So on the front page of this site, uh, the first slider may be like a welcome to the site kind of title. So welcome to Eco Produce. And then if you want to add anything special in like centering or new lines, it's all HTML. So a new line in HTML is uh, brackets BR. We have new deals for online shoppers every day. Okay, and we can see how that turns out there. We might want to align the text. So I think this will work for multiple lines. Just a simple center tag, right? Okay, it does. And then we can go into edit style to increase the size. Now, if you wanted to have um, the different lines be different sizes, you'd probably want to have multiple layers uh, rather than just one. So this is a save as class for slide one, which is just the specific settings. Okay, and that got really large there. So we need to increase the line height. Save and change. This is, of course, a bit of trial and error until you get it how you want it to look. But now it's kind of uh, outside of the main area of this slider. So it's probably too large in general. We can knock that down. Knock the line height down and save again. And maybe we can go with that. Now, um, in the original image I had, or in the original slide, I had a couple extra images here which were transparent. So we can add those in as add layer image. And I've already got them loaded up in this library. If you have one of your images and you notice that it's got a gray background that completely matches the WordPress interface, that's probably a transparent image. So this one has some transparency in this section. And this has transparency as well. So we'll add in uh, this dish here initially. We might want to resize it a bit so that we can see the entire image. So I'll position it there. It's not too bad. Add layer, and we'll add in these strawberries as well. Ah, uh, raspberries too. Who doesn't like berries? And get them right about there. Now, 
and your real one. Uh, probably want to want to add a couple more layers, but we'll wrap that up for this slide and get on to the next ones. So let's just go to the home page to refresh and see how the first slide looks. Okay, so initially. It looks like there's about a 300 second delay before they fade in. That's fine in general. Uh, if you do want to control the animations of each of these layers, you've got to select a layer and then you go down to layer animation over here. And you can select the type of animation. So start animation. Um, do you want to fade? Do you want it to slide in from the top? Um, Kind of whatever you want to go with there, and there's quite a few you can choose from. They also, oh, whoops, they also have end animations. Uh, same kind of deal there, just kind of the uh, animation you want on exit. Or if you want to get really creative, you can create a custom animation. Let's see how that looks with the uh, the text sliding in. I like it a little bit better. I, I think uh, sliding works pretty well for text in general. So now we need to fix this second slider here. There's definitely going to be a positioning issue, and then we'll make sure that this slider has a button on it so that they can be taken to our home page. Uh, no, our, our shop page, sorry. Um, so back over here, second slide. We're going to turn off premium transitions, so random and flat. And now with the background settings, I'm going to go to percent. Now you can see 100, 100 looks very stretched uh, in one way or another. Uh, horizontally stretched, I think, or is it vertically stretched? Anyway, you're gonna wanna adjust that until it looks right. So we're definitely gonna wanna put that on uh, center center. Yep, that looks a hundred times better. If we're gonna be selling logs, we wanna see the logs, right? Um, so now we're gonna need a layer here. And this layer can have text, so the text is going to be something like, we also sell logs at reasonable rates. Then there's this insert button here, uh, which is one way you can add a button to your text layer. So go ahead and do that and choose a color that you think makes sense for your site, probably in line with the colors of your theme. So for instance, an eco site, typically is gonna have green a lot, so we can keep that as a green button. And you can see the button goes over here a little bit. If you wanna move that onto a new line, then you can add a BR tag. Now, as with the link for this button, by default, it doesn't link to anything. That's what this href thing is over here. If you wanna link it to a page on your site, you should put something like forward slash uh, shop page, or it could be forward slash shop slash lumber if you have categories uh, whatever the url to get to that page is going to be is what you want to put there um i would say it's probably a good idea to drop the site name so you wouldn't put like dev test dot dev slash shop because then if your url for the site ever changes it's going to mess that link up rather you can just use a relative path of slash shop um and yeah, that should be good for that button there, but we need to make the style of the section or the layer actually look good. And I think for that, we're gonna want one that actually has a background. Ooh, I, I think I saw one that had some green there. Green on green, uh, that might be good. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad. Note that this button might be a different size when you actually go to the page than it is here. So let's see if we can move that to another line and have that refresh. And of course, for exactly how you make this look, it's gonna be kind of up to you. I'm not gonna to spend too long on the design here, but we probably wanna center that button. So quickest way to do that, probably just a simple center HTML tag, update slider, and we can go check it out on the home page. So there's our first slider. If we hit next, it brings us to the second one. Um, note that that green button is larger and we might wanna add something in the styles like line spacing to, um, or a padding actually would be ideal here. But let's actually go ahead and do that. We'll figure it out. 
So uh, we have this section here, and we want to give it some padding. So I think we need Edit Style, Advanced Editor. Ah, OK. So here's one section we can add style into. This is uh, CSS we're looking at right here, if you don't already know. So where it says padding, I believe it's left, top, right, and bottom. So if we add 40 padding to the top and bottom, up from 20, uh, and save it as a new class, of course, so slide two. Theoretically, uh, that should work out nicely. I hope so. So, second one here, and didn't quite do it. So I'm going to actually inspect here and see... Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's been a little while since I've edited CSS. It's actually uh, top right, bottom left. So let's go back in there and correct that real quick. But maybe if we add 20 pixels to each of them, instead of specifying four, you could also just do padding 20 pixels and then uh, exclude the other three, and then that would add the same padding to all of them. Okay, so with the padding, the green button is fitting there nicely. Uh, though it's a little too large or the positioning isn't quite right, we probably want to move that up so we can see the whole section. Or maybe you don't. Up to you. Um, we'll grab this, we'll move it up, and then last thing, we want to change the text of the button. So instead of green button here and between the A tag, we're going to put shop now. Because obviously, we want the customer to shop. Okay, so that's our second slider there. And maybe we could add some extra stuff here. If you have, like, I don't know, a image of the main lumberjack guy or something like that, you could add him transparently there. Uh, we'll actually be doing something similar to that in the third slide. If you remember the guy with the dreadlocks, we'll add that in for the third slide. So let's go ahead and edit this third slide now. So I'm uh, going to drop the random flat and premium and we'll just put that at random flat uh, for the positioning we'll change it to percent again and I'll set this to something that's around uh, 16 by 9 in terms of percent ratio no repeat center center okay yep that looks okay now, um, one way of making this a lot smaller, if you want to go ahead and open up an image editor, you can just scale the image in whatever way you want to make it fit the 950 by 350 pixels of this slider, or 450 pixels, that's right, we actually changed it to 450 pixels. Um, probably best to fit your images and then upload them onto your WordPress site rather than to mess around with it right here. Um, but that's just a quick fix if you uh, don't have the time or you don't have Photoshop or don't know how to use it or anything like that. So uh, let's let's go ahead and add some layers. So this one's going to have a few more layers. Let's go ahead and add some layers. I'm going to start off by adding in that really cool dude over there. We're going to position him uh, probably on the right. Uh, it was looking a little bit around for a way to flip it. Doesn't necessarily look like this one in this slider plugin. Uh, but one thing you could do is just flip it in your image editor and re export and upload it here. Once again, just kind of reiterating on that point that if you want to get your images to look just right, you probably want to edit them before you upload them into your slider. Okay, so we'll put them over here and we'll add in extra uh, layers. So we'll have the text that this guy's going to say. So, woo, unbelievable prices. Or you can omit the prices. I, I think it's better without the prices. And then that gives you that little text area. So we need to change the, uh, the style, of course, because the base style just does not look good on uh, a image background. Remember, all of these are quite customizable. So you could do like medium background dark blue, but then maybe you want to go into edit style and you change the color to something completely different using the color wheel. Perfectly fine. You can also add in a border, which might actually look nice on some of these slides. So yeah, let's actually try putting a border here. Um, we'll just let's save it as that. So 
This is the slide three template. Save as new. Okay, we actually need to set a style for the uh, border in order for that to show up. So let's save that one more time. Really overwrite. Can we see it now? Yes, we can. Cool. Need to set the text one more time. Yes. Must have forgotten to hit save. So, woo. Unbelievable. Now, that doesn't quite look like it updated quite right. So I'm going to hit update because I, I know. Whoa. Okay. At least I think we had the right style set. So let's see. Slide three. Where's the slide three one? Okay, that was a little bit weird. Anyway, uh, woo, unbelievable. We probably need to make it larger. Okay. Increase the line height to make sure it fits right. Save again. And you can check this little dialog box if you ever get sick of the notifications. Okay, that looks right. And we can put it a little bit over here. Um, Kind of to infer that this guy's the one talking. Uh, one thing you could do is like add another image that might be an arrow or a uh, whatever, like a pop up dialogue cloud or something like that. If you just go grab clip art images for it, you can get that kind of thing uh, to better infer that this is the guy who's talking. So let's add some more stuff in. Add a layer image. What kind of prices are unbelievable? Well, we have a very special holiday pricing here. We'll just have this be a really nice big image. We'll just leave it right there and then add a new layer over that for the text. This would be kind of how you would do that cloud bubble dialogue thing I've been talking about. You would just put text over an image rather than have the text have its own background. So for about 99 cents, carrots per pound okay and we definitely need to change that style so large bold and white sounds pretty good oops okay so if you ever see your stuff disappear there um always come down here and check to make sure it's the right order Whatever is the highest Z index, and by that I mean highest number, is what's going to show on the other thing. So if I was to drag this uh, text under the uh, image, then the image is actually going to show over the text. That's not what we want. So uh, if you can't see things, um, look at your Z indexes. So let's update that. And I feel like we need one more image. Did I have one more here? Okay, maybe we can grab one off of Pixabay. So, I feel like we should have another carrot image. So maybe we put a transparent, transparency. Transparency, if I can spell right. Okay, maybe just carrot then. And we can grab this, <laughs> let's go with this uh, clip art. Okay. Uh, if you're putting this on your live professional website, probably get a graphic designer to make you some cool art. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, add one more image and add layer. So I'll drag this into the media interface. Insert, and that's a really big carrot. So we need to scale that down. We can do that over here. I'm gonna check scale proportional. So image scale, and we basically knock this down to whatever size we want it to be. If you have scale proportional, it'll automatically adjust the height when you adjust the width. And it updates here. We can even rotate it a little bit, which seems like a good idea, actually. Leave it there, and that doesn't look too bad. So we'll update that. We'll go to the home page. And there's going to be one more thing I do want to show you guys. So everything on this slider does load. But it all loads at exactly the same time, and it doesn't really look that spiffy. It, it could use a little bit more animation, and we can set that up inside of Revolution Slider. So, for instance, uh, with the text, I like to put that on a slide in. So, long from the right, 
and you can notice the start duration for the timing, which we'll be doing here. So I want this guy to actually slide in first, and all of these um, image layers, they just have default names. We probably want to change that for the sake of recognizing it later. So guy, and then let's see here. We can have him come in at, well, start transition, 500 milliseconds. We can have him slide in from the right as well. But then if he's coming in at 500 milliseconds, we want this text to appear a lot later than that. So I'm actually going to set this at 1500 seconds. Now, if this guy's coming in, um, 500 seconds, this is happening at 1500 seconds, we probably want the deal of the day or the carrot pricing to appear first. So I can leave this fading in as normal, um, the, the star that is, which we can also change in general parameters, so the star. But then the carrots per pound, let's see if we can do something a little bit more interesting. So, skew from long left, let's see. Oh, yeah, that looks that looks pretty decent. And maybe we can also put that as the exit skew to left, maybe. And let's update that with all the animations, and we'll see how that looks. So second slide looks fine. Third slide, and that's like, well, the, the price appears, and then this guy's really hungry for carrots, and then woo, unbelievable carrots for ninety nine cents a pound. So once again, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this tutorial on setting up a slider on your homepage for WordPress. If you're looking for Slider Revolution or better yet, a theme that comes with Slider Revolution included and fully supports it out of the box, uh, I would recommend checking out themeforce.net. They have a lot of premium themes for sale and I'll include a link to that down below. Uh, aside from that, I'll see you guys in my next WordPress tutorial. Till then guys.